Hello everybody, today I'm going to be playing with some felt. From BB Craft for the month of March I received a large packet of colourful felt sheets. I have never really played a lot with felt at all. I've done needle felting but I haven't really done a lot with felt in my crafting life. So I thought well this is a good opportunity to play. So I thought I'd make a little couple of things. The first thing I've done is I've covered an old box. Um, I've just covered it with this lovely sheet of paper and it's actually uh, from Uniquely Creative and it's called Blooming. Um, the other side of it has flowers on it. So that's what I have done. I've covered the lid. This lid actually had an acetate center and I didn't want that. So I've reinforced the top, covered it inside and outside. The actual box was silver. So I'm actually leaving it silver. I've put this over the bottom because it was a bit scuffed and I have lined the inside with a sheet of the gray felt. So makes it nice and soft and if you put things in there they're not going to be too noisy and move around too much. So that's my little box that I'm going to be using and what I'm going to be doing is trying to decorate a little sewing machine, a felt sewing machine. I haven't actually glued that paper on yet, I didn't realise that. It'll be fine at the moment. Okay so I have already gone ahead and stitched my little sewing machine together. Some of you may know I have a sewing machine pattern. It's available on my Etsy store but it's nothing like this or is it? Just let me show you something. So this little sewing machine is actually the very same thing. Let me just Take that off so you can see properly. It is the same pattern for my mini sewing machine, but it doesn't have the gusset running down the side. And it looks it looks a lot different, doesn't it? But it's actually the exact same pattern as my little three-dimensional sewing machine. Um, and you can make it just with the two pieces without the gusset, which is a lot easier to stitch for those that might be beginner sewers. Just let me put this over here. And all I did was take the two sewing machine pieces and I stitched a very narrow hem, uh, about a little bit less than a quarter of an inch, I would think. Let me have a look. Hmm. Yes, definitely. Probably, what is that, one eighth of an inch? Because felt doesn't fray, you can get away with doing a very, very narrow hem. It sewed up beautifully. It was so easy and I just made a little bottom for it. Um, what I did was once I'd stuffed it, I sat it there and I drew around the base approximately and then I stitched it on. I stuffed it with cushion fill, fiber fill, um, very nice and tightly. And then I just blanket stitched this little base onto my sewing machine and I thought we might decorate it together. It works really nicely as a pin cushion. It's nice and firm, but it's really, really nice to put pins and things in. And um, just let me fix this little one up. I've actually attached the little plastic bead caps um, temporarily underneath the sewing machine so they don't get crushed in transit, these ones. Okay. So what I also got beside the felt that I'm going to play with today are these beautiful, beautiful flowers. Aren't they lovely? I just love these flowers. So I've picked four of the colours out 
there's a few I think there might be six different colors um, in the box because there's an orange one as well or maybe there's just the five it could be oh no there's a, a, a like a really bright yellow one as well so I'm not putting those really bright ones on although they would look beautiful wouldn't they but they're not the orange and that they're not really the colors I go for so I thought I'd play with that I also have this lovely daisy trim here so I'm going to take some of the flowers from there as well so I'm thinking the pink the pink will look beautiful I wonder the green might look all right as well I mean you could put a row of them across there if you wanted to I definitely want the little yellow one so we'll go with that one let's have a think not the orange we will save it for something else perhaps the green maybe the green I'm not too sure about the green but I'll take a couple of pink ones definitely and let's take another yellow one keep it like that and another green one perhaps I'm not quite sure if I'm using the green but there we go so let me just pop this away and you I think there's something like five yards of this you get and um, I'm quite sure you could coffee or tea stain them to soften that brightness as well which brings me see the blues lovely maybe I'll keep a couple of the blue ones not to put on here but to put on the box that might be nice there we go okay so I also got a large roll of rickrack and I've cut a piece of it off just let me show you what it originally this is the original colour here and all I did was put it in some tea and can you see the difference it's not as candy colored plus I feel that it goes with these flowers much better they were just the wrong tone um, originally but that's what the tea did to it it's amazing isn't it um, so I've tea stained some of the rickrack as well I also made a little pink cushion um, to pop on the side there perhaps I've just done two circles of felt and blankets stitched around it as well I was going to use it as my little um, winder but I just know it, it's not working for me so let's see what we can do with this um, these are beautiful see it's just lovely isn't it I could put that there now I've got some little pins here so the beauty about this is I can just stick these little pins in to hold things in place while I'm thinking about it see that could look quite nice there uh, like that I could put one here perhaps no, maybe one here. I haven't really got this far yet. I've thought I'd just sew the machine together and then play. <laughs> like that. I could do that. And a, not the blue. What about the pink? Here, like that. I could do pink there on top, or 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 or. Where's that green? That's pretty, isn't it? I could do the green here on top, like that. Oh, just put it 
down there. Okay, that's easier. Okay, I could do that. And we've got yellow. I could put a pink one here. It can be like a flower child kind of pink cushion. <laughs> flower power, that's the word. Flower power. Like that. And I would want one on this side, wouldn't I? So maybe the white one could go here. Let's have a look. Try and get it. We don't have to get it the same, but it sort of sits quite nicely the way it is. So, mm, okay. There, like that. And a green one, perhaps, over here. thought about it. I think it looks rather cute. Like that. I need another pin on there. There. Yeah. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Now, I found this little uh, bobbin thingy. I don't know if it needs it. Does that look too big on there? It might look a little bit big. So we might have to make one. I also perhaps need something for my winder that I'll have to think about. So my idea was put my machine there, glue it on, I will decorate it and then I can have a little pin cushion here as well and I could perhaps you know, do some little daisies on the box like that as well. I think that would look quite nice. Oh, I forgot my rick rack, didn't I? Okay, well, oh, oh, I just thought too maybe a daisy on the top of my pin cushion as well okay there's a thought um i've got rick rack i can use what am i going to do with the rick rack i don't know whether i'll be putting it on here oh hang on hang on. could it possibly i think that might look a bit odd though yeah, it might look a bit odd. I could run it. Perhaps down the centre seam. But then that's just bringing attention to the centre seam, isn't it? No, I won't do that. What I could do, though, is put it on my box, just to break up all the black and white. Perhaps around the edge of the box there, like that. Like that, no. I uh, don't think it will go there. Okay, let's have a think. I don't need the rick rack on there which is a shame because I really did want to use it um oh oh maybe depending on how I do the winder maybe I can have it on the winder somehow um, I'll have to make a little winder um like a spool type of I'm thinking like a ribbon you know the ribbon thing the cardboard ribbon things and or something like it and then I can put that around the edge of it 
Yes, I could do something like that. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is stitch these on. First I'm going to stitch, am I going to, yeah, first I'm going to stitch these on using a, a thread. I wonder, I have got threads from Baby Craft. Let's see if we've got one the colour of that one could work. These are from a previous design. That's fairly good. I think I'll use that one. There's a huge amount of threads in here, isn't it wonderful? Really nice um, variety of colours. So we will use some thread and I'm just going to go, I'll show you how I start. Just find a needle, not that one, I bet that one over there. I will just start by putting my needle underneath like that and coming out on the edge close to where the edge of the flower is. That way it hide, hides my knot underneath the flower. I'm just going to trim these little bits off the flower where it was joined to the next flower. <laughs> don't want bits of purple on there. Okay, so just like that. Um, I wonder whether I should have got the colour of the flower I think I should have, otherwise I'm going to see the colour of. Okay, take two. That's okay. It's only one stitch. It's not going to hurt. I'll put that thread because I'll have no doubt a blue flower. So where's my... I'll put a link to this in the description. No, that's the waxed thread. I will put a link to this in the description box below if anybody is interested. Just have to find the end, it's usually tucked in somewhere. So I will get that one. And we'll start again. have to move some of these scissors otherwise I'll get my thread all tangled up on the scissors because I tend to tends to happen that way okay so I have my yellow thread I'll do the same thing I'll just come up under there come out there so it's hidden underneath and now I can grab some of the felt and come up on the flower but because it's the same colour as the flower it's not going to be noticeable and I'm just going to put a few little stitches in but, um, on each probably two stitches on each of the little petals on this one one going here on the side
and then one that way and then coming back to the next petal over here I'm trying to keep it under the camera okay and then two on this one two on that one and then once I've gone all the way around I'll do some in the middle just in each of those between each petal towards the middle to hold it down and these little sewing machines are very easy to stitch into they're not difficult at all it's um you know because you can squish them I would recommend using small these small embroidery pins if you're going to pin them like I did larger ones would probably stick through the other side so did I put one a stitch there already that'll be very nice so I'll go ahead and I'll sew all these daisies on in the same manner changing up the threads to match the daisies and once it's done you know you can use your pins and go straight through those flowers it's beautiful okay I'll be back once I've finished stitching all the daisies on all right so they have all been stitched on in the same way as I showed with the first daisy oh and I just I stitched the pink one onto the little pink cushion just in the center so the little petals lift up as well what I thought I might do is a little like embroidery um, the stalk you know to join them all up I'm thinking um, don't know how that will go I'm sure it will look fine I just need to get myself a little pencil and be very carefully um, perhaps because once it's on there it's on there okay so there just little curly bits That I can embroider like that I'm thinking oh, it's a bit hard to see like that like that Something they don't have to be perfectly the same on either side, like this could have one just coming down, it doesn't have to go. Well, it could, it could join up perhaps to over here. Like that. Like that. Okay. Uh, did I do one here? I'll probably just do a back stitch or something um, 
once I stick it onto the box I can decorate around the bottom there so I just need embroidery thread to do a little stitch now that's it's a bit hard to see <laughs> it really is a bit hard to see I wonder if I, I don't think I can rub it out that's the thing I've got to be careful it should be all right okay so I used these lovely threads so let's just pop those back in to get a green embroidery thread, a green one. I could even use black or dark grey because of the box. It doesn't have to be green, does it? Let me see what I've got and I'll be back. All right, so I've got this nice grey colour. I think that will be quite good. It's not too dark like black. Um, and this is a stranded th thread. I'll start with that. Uh, I might leave it all six strands simply so it stands out more. We'll see what that looks like. Let me find a, ne a good needle here. That one looks all right. Hope this works out all right. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to start here, but I need to hide my knot. So I think I'm going to go through like from this side, work my needle under it and sort of there so my oh so my knot is hidden under that petal there okay and I think I'll do a stem stitch for this We'll see how we go because it's a dimensional. Um, I don't know how good that needle is because it's a dimensional project. Um, I'm not quite sure how good it will be. We will say. I normally do my stem stitch the opposite way round, but I thought I'd try it this way. So it's a little bit uncomfortable until I get used to it, but I think that stands out quite nice, doesn't it? And stem stitch is like you take a, a stitch forward but you come back as well and see how it that is halfway down that stitch and then you go up again and come back so I don't know I'm gonna have to manipulate this I feel like I need a bent needle like <laughs> for the, you know those um like a hook needle or something because it's dimensional so it could be quite tricky especially around here maybe I didn't think that through it hard enough okay I'm back and I've done all the embroidery on the little sewing machine and 
It was fiddly. I didn't anticipate it being quite as fiddly as it was. Um, like, this was fine, but I found going across here and under here was a bit fiddly. The flat areas, um, that wasn't too bad, but the flat areas were more fiddly than the curved areas because you can't get in and out. So I, I did, I got my, thim, my, my thimble, poor old thimbles, seen so many <laughs> projects. I need to replace it because the whole top of it's coming up. Um, I've already patched it a couple of years ago, but it's, I can't find them around here. So I'll have to look online, but I don't know what size it is. Um, anyway, that's a different story. So I've done it, but it wasn't as easy as I thought it would be, but it's done and um, I'm happy with that. So I've just popped this onto a little bit of uh, it's cardboard and roughly sketched around it because I thought it might be easier rather than just gluing. I'm just cutting inside of that line as much as possible. Rather than gluing the felt directly to the box it might be better to glue it to a piece of cardboard and then glue the cardboard to the box so let's have a look I don't want to particularly see it but it'll be decorated anyway I just take that point off and so I want that on there just so it's nice it, it's easier for me to put on here and then I can decorate around the bottom of it I think I just I don't want to put too much on there I can put a lot of pressure on here to flatten it down basically um, so I'm getting a good strong glue and this is Helmar quick dry adhesive um, use your preferred glue I'm just going to put the glue. You can always tell when the weather's cooling down, the glue decides to not want to come out very easily. So, a nice amount of glue on there. I don't want any glue on my fingers because glue and felt or wool or anything or velvet it, it's not a good they don't go very well together they make a mess so I'm putting it on there but now what I'm going to do is just press down very very hard on the base just to get it nicely stuck It's only got a small base. When you make the three-dimensional sewing machine, it has a much bigger base and you can glue the front of it and then pull it back to lift it up. Um, but it doesn't quite work that way with just this, I think, a two-dimensional set. Okay, that gives me a better surface to glue on top of here. Um, but I'm not going to do that just yet. So, and I also thought I might have a bit of ribbon I can put around just to jazz it up a little bit. These, these ribbons come from BB Craft also. And I've got this, I've got two pinks. I've got this nice raspberry kind of pink isn't that nice and I think that would be fine I wonder if I should just put a bit of that just to jazz that up a little bit yeah just to break up the black and white I think that's what I might do so this is a happy a happy sewing machine this one Okay, we'll be generous. I'll cut a little bit more off. Like that. Lovely piece of gingham ribbon. And I'm going to start. 
start it at the back and just glue that all the way around. It just sort of breaks. Should I put it on or down like that? Oh, oh. Now in the middle, I think in the middle is fine. Yeah. I think that will be nice. So I think I'll use the same glue for that. And I did glue those corners, the paper corners that I'd forgotten. I did glue that before. sure it's the right way and there is I think a tiny little bit of difference between the right and the wrong way on this the little edge pops up a little bit more on the correct way let's try and get it as straight as possible nice to break it up all that black and white a bit it's like you can't really see it from the top but I just you know if it's on a little shelf or something um, you could even put little butter oh wouldn't that be cute little buttons along there that would be nice I'll have to keep my up for some little colorful buttons or something because I don't really have colored buttons um, or I could go digging. Maybe I do. Oh, maybe I do. Okay, back to it. So we were going to put that and that, like that, and that there, and that there. So it's like that gluing that on there. I need to have a little winder. Um, see it doesn't need a needle. Um, I know they look cute with a needle in it. Um, you can use anything you want for a needle. It doesn't have to be a needle. It can be you know anything like this is a skewer that I use for paper beads you could use something like that if you wanted you could use I've used pen nibs decorative old you know um, ink pen nibs things like that um, I've got this these little bead caps here they they can sometimes look nice like that you could even paint them you could even paint them if you wanted to that might be nice you could do that um, okay I'm going to go now and try and find something to use for a winder and then I'll be back So I've traced around a washi tape onto some corrugated cardboard three times and glued those together and I'm just cutting some felt circles out of pink to cover those with and I thought have to trim the cardboard down a little but I thought that could work for the little winder at the side so I just need to trim the cardboard down a little if that's better 
Kirche. And glue those on like that. And then this is a strip a little bit left from when I covered the inside of the box. Um, I thought I might glue that around the edge there. Is that about right? Make sure it's about right. Okay. It's very early in the morning at the moment and the birds are just waking up outside which is nice. So if I glue those, actually let's see if the darkness pops through, although that maybe I need to have a piece of paper as well just to take the darkness away. I've got some scrap paper here I could use a little bit. So I'll just cut another couple of circles and glue them to that just to take that. See, I don't know if you can see on camera. That's what it, the pink looks like on the white light surface. But then that's what it looks like. It's got a darker look to it. It kind of looks a bit dirty. So I'll cover it in white paper. Okay, so they're glued on. Now I'm going to glue this strip around the edge like that. I'm just using, oh, I'll put it on the screen, the glue I'm using. It's not a tacky glue, it's that other one. So, just trying to get as much glue as I can on top of the cardboard. Because it's corrugated, it has that hollowness to it as well. But as long as I, oh, and on the edge of the felt as well, better put a little bit there. Being careful not to make a mess of it. Like that, just tiny little dots all the way around. Hmm. might need to use some pins to hold this but I don't want to use my good ones I've got some old pins here somewhere you would think so what's that oh hang on oh. these are okay See if we can pop a couple of these in just to hold it down like a pinwheel. <laughs> I could have used the Helmer quick dry, but I just it's a thicker glue and I didn't want to risk making a mess with it. So I'm going to do it this way and I'll sacrifice a couple of pins for it. That doesn't want to work. There we go. Like that. and then leave it to dry, I think. Like that. And I'm 
where the join is will probably be underneath at uh, the bottom of the winder so it's not seen okay so press that down a bit and hopefully that dries nicely probably won't know until it dries but that's the general idea of it yeah let, I shall walk away and let it dry and see how that goes but the idea is to then attach some of this lovely rickrack around the edge of it as well that way I get to use the rickrack oh look it's a, it's a nice size for it I get to use the rickrack yeah so I'm going to let that dry and then I'll be back okay so where are we up to that's our little uh, winder I've put the rickrack around the edge of it like that I've popped a little daisy flower on the front of it I've just glued that on as soon as it's through cardboard and I will be gluing this to the little sewing machine but I think I'll do that once it's attached to the box um, we've got that we've got that and that that's what we're using I did go ahead and put a little bit of this black braid that I had in my stash um, I just thought the, the checkered it was just a little bit stark by itself so I put that and I quite like that because it's got a, a little bit of a shine to it which brings in the silver on the box as well and just breaks up the pink a little bit so I need to find I think a couple of little ribbons a couple of little ribbons for stalks for these flowers so let me go find those so I don't have any green ribbon that is appropriate but I thought I've got all this felt so I'm just going to cut some slithers I'm not quite sure how big I'll need them so of green felt and I can use this which I think will be fine so I want one perhaps about there so we'll cut that one there like that maybe if I put it and then another one a bit longer uh, up there let's have a look so about there and about there like that And then that will go there and that will go over here and I need to have something around the base of my little sewing machine there I think that will be all right yes I do just like that it's it's a fun little project a little bit different to what I normally do which is quite all right and I'm going to use the hell mug quick dry glue to put these on so we want one there on that one I'm going to be careful though because I don't want it slopping over the edges just a nice thin little bead of glue like 
this. I'm not going to squash it down too firmly to start with because I don't want it oozing out of the side of the felt. And so that one goes there. This sort of thing would be a great project for younger people as well there's not a lot of sewing involved and it's just it's it's quite fun to play with felt I know you know a lot of people make little stuffed toys and things with felt I'm not really into stuffed toys this is as close as I get to that sort of thing um, but they do and also needle books felt is great in needle books I'm just putting a bit of glue in the center of the flower about there oh did I get that I got that on the right way yep I did okay let's put that back on just making sure the little end bits where it's joined are nice and tidy okay so you can tell that's the right side see the wrong side is it's a little bit messier that's all Um, they're doing work in the next street over that's what that noise is it's so early though like it's it's not even half past seven in the morning and that's been going on for quite some time so someone's eager to get things done okay my little pink cushion can go here like that I think so just a just on that part that hits the box like that I hope that's in the right spot there we go ooh almost done Felt is also very good for, let's make sure they're down, like not on this particular box, but if you had a wooden or a metal box and you wanted it on your furniture, you can put felt on the bottom of it to stop it damaging your furniture. Um, okay, I'm going to put this on and then I'm going to have to put something around the base of it. So putting glue on that cardboard that I put on there earlier. About there like that. Oh, what do I eh? Okay, let me have a look. Okay, I just I want to press against the bottom of it. Better make sure it's nice and straight as well. Rather sweet, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Rather sweet. I could put that over like that. That gives me more strength to press down on it. Okay, now I have to work out what I'm putting. And I'm thinking maybe seam binding runched up would be nice around the bottom of it so let me go see if I've got a good color seam binding 
so I found two different greens that I had these are both from paper inspirations um, I think I'm going to go with that one that one's called grass green that one's called spring green uh, I just think this kind of goes with this darker felt a bit better so I think I'll do that they're both lovely and all I'm going to do is oh, there's already a piece cut see it's early and because my lights on it's attracting tiny little um, night night things I don't know what they're called actually they're not ants they, they're attracted to the light and sometimes they get through the fly screens unfortunately right so all I am going to do is I might just trim that end a bit put a running stitch through it I've got a grey thread here that I could use is that going to be big enough probably not okay let's get a green thread and that one looks perfect I do like that little kit of threads uh, it, see you get this little tiny end and you just pull it and then it starts it off so we'll get a nice long piece of that find a needle that one will do Sometimes they're, you need to cut them on a slight angle to get them through, especially when it, you've just started the roll. It can be a bit fuzzy on the end. So just cut your thread on a slight angle. That goes for in the sewing machine as well. It just makes threading a little bit easier. I'm going to knot the end. So we've got a nice size knot on there so it won't pull through and I'm just going to do a running stitch that's probably more than what I need but it's okay to double it up um, what I might do is just fold the end piece over as well and perhaps just do an extra little back stitch there and then a running stitch uh, straight through the middle I think just straight down the middle like that and it's not too small the stitch so just like that pull it through and then when you get to the end you're going to do that and run it all up and I'll be able to put it in there so I'll go ahead and do that and then I'll show you what it looks like. I'll be gluing that around the base. So I started off doing the straight stitch down the center there but decided that's going to just look too straight. So what I'm doing is I'm doing a curved stitch going from top to bottom and back up again. I'm going to see how that turns out. Um, I haven't done this before, so it'll be interesting to see how it looks. I liked the effect of this much better. I went and unpicked the be the little straight part that I'd started with and re-threaded the thread and did it in the wavy section. It looks really effective, doesn't it? I quite like that. I don't know why I've never done that before. Okay, now I'm going to glue it onto the little sewing machine and that will cover up this little bottom part here. So I did leave a thread at the end, but I have tied it off. So hopefully this will go fine. We'll soon find out. I just have to be very, you know, careful how I do it, that's all. I'm just thinking 
there's a tiny little gap under there. I wonder if I've got a bit of cording that I can glue in there first. See how there's a tiny little gap here? And then I can glue this to the cording. Just let me have a quick little look. It doesn't really matter what colour it is, just as long as it fills that gap a little bit more. I think that will be fine. So let's just say about there. A bit extra because cording does tend to unravel a little bit. And I will glue that on first. That'll give me just something extra to glue it with, to glue it to, sorry. You can do this with a hot glue gun. I always, I do have one. I've got a new one still in its wrapper, but I always forget to use it. I'm so used to using the wet glues. probably be a bit easier. That gives me quite a nice, I'll just push that down a little bit, make sure it's all gluing nicely like that. And I think that will be easier for me to attach the seam binding to now. And then we're almost done. Isn't that good? Um, I think I'm going to need a pokey. I'll use this one. Oh, hang on. That's my purple thing that's my good sewing one I've got another one here somewhere uh, a spare here we go that's a dupe I think that's what they call them um, and I can use that with other things so let's just just have to when you're making pin cushions you just need to not use glue where you're going to be putting pins because pins don't like going through glue I did measure around this before I ended off my seam binding so I knew I would have enough to go right around <laughs> which is important. Okay, a little bit more, a little bit more. Like that. 
goes in like that. That's okay. It's attached. That's the main thing now. I'm just going to go and scrunch it in a little bit more. Just a little tiny bit in there. Okay, I'll just trim those two threads off like that. Isn't that cute? Very cute. Um, I did have a little look around for some little, I don't have many of these little bead caps left now, and I thought perhaps you know you could put things like that around there. as well if, if need be. I'm not sure if it needs that sort of thing. The green kind of gets lost anyway and I don't have a huge variety of them but well, they don't need to be evenly spaced do they? They could be like um, that over there perhaps and then we have to put this on which way does that go that way we need to put our little winder on and I think do I want a little bobbin on top I might put a little bobbin on top as well I'm thinking that might need a little something Okay, let me go and think about my bobbin and attaching this, and I'll be back. All right, so my little winder is on. I did put a little needle there. I used the green bead cap that I thought would get lost in here, and I just, oh, I sacrificed. I sacrificed one of my tiny little embroidery pins because the end is so tiny on it. I used that, glued that in, cut the sharp end off with a pair of, you know, jewellery cutters and glued that on and I think that's quite cute. It's not necessary. You don't have to have a needle but, you know, now all I have to do is the bobbin. I did glue the beads in. I put a little bit of the lighter colour, the spring green seam binding I just tied a little bit with a knot and popped it behind each flower and I think that just breaks up that darker green a little bit and so we're just going to do the bobbin now and I came up with an idea a little bit of the grey felt I thought if I can just roll that up like that nice and tight perhaps would be best And that might just make the perfect little size bobbin of thread. I've got a bit of grey um, cotton here. Oh, it goes straight through thread, so <laughs> through the felt. Sure, I knotted it. No, I didn't. Oh, just a minute. Let me 
pin that together for a sec and put a knot in it. Okay, let's see how we go. Uh, much better. I'll just trim that off though. Knots help. And I'm just going to put a couple of stitches in to this. That thread might be a bit dark for this. I don't think it'll... I'll put it to the back. How's that? Just so it doesn't unravel. a little bit of um, embroidery thread as well. Still got those out. So a pretty pink colour perhaps. What about that one? Yeah, because it'll bring in this pink down here as well. So I'm just going to take some of that off. Why is that? Oh, I see. There's another thread on top. Oh, yep, there we go. <laughs> I'll fix that in a minute. If I actually just... Take it through the middle and out somewhere. Oh, it's got to get through a lot just to attach it. There we go. Okay. And now I can just do that. That'll be fine. It's not real. I'll just there we go. bobbin full of thread Bit of glue on the end oh. do I need anything for it to sit on I don't think so really you can find a hundred things to do with these you know Oh look, there's another little, there's another little bead cap. Um, you could keep going and going and going. Like if it was a fancy one, you could almost have it sat on something like that. A little sparkly rhinestone, but I don't think we need that on there. It just doesn't go. Uh, whoops, don't click. 
Do we need anything? I'm not sure. I'm not going to put anything. But you could if you wanted to. I don't want it oozing out. I want that little seam at the back. And I want it right there. Like that. And some people take the thread and put it here and around to here. I don't do that. It's just, it's just pretend. But what I might do is just let me... Okay, so I found this. This is just a little pin I made this ages ago. It's just another little bag cap with pin through it and a couple of stoppers and spaces underneath. I could just and it's like ta-da. Anyway, it just shows you can do anything you want. <laughs> okay, so there's my... Let me zoom out a little bit. Let's try not to get too much mess in the way. It's quite dark, so there we go. I'll just turn that up a bit more. Let's have a look. So there is my felted sewing machine on a box. We've still got the box that way. The box is lined with felt as well. I have a little pin cushion at the front here made from the felt using the lovely daisy flowers and the larger crochet flowers. You can pop your pins in anywhere because it's all stitched and it works beautifully as a pin cushion. This is rather sweet. I have stitching on it. I have a little winder on the side there. I have my bobbin on top. It's also useful because it's got the little box which is all finished as well. I've used the ribbon, the pink checkered ribbon from BB Craft along with the felt, the daisy flowers and the lovely crocheted flowers as well together with the pink rickrack. So I'll list all those items in the description box below. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. This is actually quite a lot of fun to make because it's something a little bit different for me and I love to do that occasionally just break things up and it you know it refreshes you, gives you ideas and it's a bit of fun. It's you know, it really is a bit of fun. And I'm quite happy with the way it's turned out. Very jazzy, isn't it? So there you go. I hope you've enjoyed that tutorial. And remember, this little pattern is available on my Etsy store. Uh, together, I've got some little kits there as well for sewing machines. A couple of people have asked me for the mini sewing machines. Not everybody sews, but they like to decorate. So I've done the sewing for you and you can decorate yourself. Just a little put there. So, thank you so much for watching everybody and thank you Baby Craft for these lovely items. I will have one more project to put up before the end of the month from BB Craft. So take care everybody. Bye. You could also put something here for a little needle plate that just occurred to me when I was saying goodbye. So, but I'm happy with it. I'm leaving it. Bye.